This video clip will demonstrate the positional movement and accuracy of the D6050 series positioner. We will jog the roll axis 180 degrees. And we'll now jog, jog the table 90 degrees. We'll rotate the roll axis back. Again, for time, this is a 360 degree uh, rotation of the roll positioner. And then we will reset the turntable and make a complete revolution. Here's the positioner at minus 180 degrees and we will now jog it to plus 180 which is 360 degrees total. This turntable is equipped with the optional automated Z-axis you will see at the bottom, which is a linear ball screw attached to the main carriage for precise phase centering if needed. We will now jog the positioner back to its zero position. And the next clip will describe the scalar calibration. The system supports multiple calibration methods. For this example, we are going to use the substitution calibration method, which requires simply placing a known antenna on the positioner. Correction for cable loss and path length is not needed, as the entire link will be normalized to the antenna on the positioner. The antenna you see here is a 1 to 18 gigahertz log periodic antenna which we have calibrated data for. To make this calibration, we're going to make sure the antenna points itself directly at the transmit antenna. So we will go ahead and move it to 90 degrees. And we're gonna go ahead and rotate the polarization 90. Now, as you can see here, this is our current link level for this measurement. And in the software, there is an option called Cal System. With this setup, you simply hit one button will tell you to connect the equipment. It takes a reading from the analyzer and then simply you apply the data for the reference antenna. Since we already loaded it once before, we'll just use the previous load. We, the data file for this antenna has been truncated, so you will see that it's a flat line to meet the rest of the frequency requirements. and the system is now calibrated. Now that the system is calibrated, we'll, we, we will move it back to its zero position and mount our antenna under test. For this measurement, we will be measuring a 2.4 gigahertz air patch antenna, which exhibits very good gain and it's exactly tuned at 2.4 gigahertz. 
So at this point, all you simply have to do is replace the calibrated antenna with our antenna under test, and we can go ahead and take a pattern. You'll see we now have the patch antenna mounted. Now you'll notice the bottom of the positioner is not covered. Um, typically when making measurements, you will want to cover it with some sort of absorber. So I'm gonna place a small piece of absorber down below. And then now we're just about ready to take a cut. If you're wondering about the small anechoic chamber, this setup has been used recently to test 5G millimeter wave antennas between 28 and 40 gigahertz. Therefore, a large chamber is typically not required. So as you can see, we have our software running. We, off in the far distance, you can see the patch antenna mounted to the positioner. Uh, you even get a little sneak peek at the vector network analyzer in front. So you will see on the uh, screen of the software, it's set to go from minus 180 to plus 180 in five degree increments. Since our calibration has already been finished, uh, it's as easy as just pressing measure, measure azimuth cut. The description azimuth is in reference to the horizontal plane. This is a vertically polarized patch antenna, so the plane that we're rotating actually would be the azimuth plane for this measurement. And this will also give you a good idea of how long it takes. For 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz antennas, five degrees per measurement is typically good enough, unless you are measuring things like parabolic dishes, which might have very tight beams and or uh, very small side lobes, which you were trying to pick out. But uh, as you can see, it's taking just about a minute to get this uh, measurement. Our frequency on the display is at 2.4 gigahertz. And uh, since we did our calibration, we're actually getting live data right here. So you can see right here, it's right about nine, uh, right about nine dBi of gain. Um, in a setup like this, we would spec plus minus one dB simply because it's of course not a, um, uh, you know, perfect setup. This was done uh, primarily to demonstrate the uh, positioner and the system. So we can see here the measurement is uh, just about finished. Now with this calibration type, there's absolutely no post-processing required. We can get right in, look at the data, export it, etc. So let's just go in here and uh, let's go to data processing and let's click on the polar plot. And we can move the frequency slider. Sorry, it's hard to see here. But I'm going to scroll it up to right around uh, the two point, let's look around the 2.4 gig area. And there we go. So you can dynamically just change through all the frequencies. If you want to know the uh, gain profile over frequency, we can click this button here. And lo and behold, uh, and we want to put this back at zero, which is, so this will give you the over frequency at any position on the scan. So this is zero. So we can see here we have excellent, um, uh, excellent gain right in the 2.4 gigahertz range, and then you can also see there's a little bit of uh, uh, gain around the um, around the 5 gigahertz band as well. Now we'll go ahead and we'll exit this plot, and we'll go back and let's run a cut of the other plane now. Okay, we're back and about ready to run the other cut. You can see here that the Elevation extents is now a full circle because we're going to run a complete 360 degree uh, cut of this plane. And so I'm just going to go up here and hit measure elevation cut now. And you'll notice the actual positioner moving. This one takes just a little bit longer because it's uh, basically moves has to the, there's acceleration and deceleration settings and we do this to make sure that the antenna doesn't wobble uh, as it stops. This would make for a, um, a very jumpy looking measurement. And you can watch on the software screen now as this antenna starts coming around, we're going to start getting the main lobe little side lobe there that we just passed and here comes the uh, here comes the main lobe you 
We are currently working on some uh, options to be able to make this a continuously scanning system, uh, even though it does not have encoders, uh, by using the internal step counts from the stepper motor controller. So that is currently in development, and once that is complete, um, I believe we will be able to cut these scans um, at least by two-thirds by having it continuously move and collect data. Now for a spherical scan, we would only move the elevation plus minus 90 and the azimuth 360 to collect all the points on the sphere. But for principal plane cuts, typically people do full 360 degrees. The head you see there on the positioner is completely non-metallic with the exception of a couple set screws and the rotary joint and RF cable. The rest of it is made from um, uh, one piece of fiberglass and some PVC and uh, the, the, the bearings are Delrin with glass balls for um, the least amount of um, uh, reflectivity as possible. And we can see here the measurement just finished up and again we have our plot on the screen go into data processing and we can go again back into the polar plot and again we can slide through any of the frequencies that we would like. You will also see that at the bottom of the polar plot it shows you the beam width so right now we're sitting at about 59 degrees uh, which is uh, which, which correlates very well with a gain of uh, 8.6 dBi. So now we're going to go back to the main screen and uh, we're going to go ahead and set this up for a spherical measurement, uh, which is going to take a little longer so we don't want to waste all the video time. So we'll get it basically started and uh, as I mentioned before, we only want to scan from 90 to 90. And it'll take it a second here and then it'll update. It calculates all of the possible positions for the increment and the range that you've chosen. So sometimes it takes a little bit, especially when the smallest resolution uh, can go as small as um, 0 0.00125 uh, degrees. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, exit out of this. And maybe for this one we'll do a 10 degree on the elevation, just to speed things up a little bit. And uh, Technically, all we have to do is hit uh, measure azimuth cut, or actually, sorry, scan as L, and this is going to do a complete scan of this antenna. There is a time remaining counter, which bases uh, pretty much, it, it takes samples of the measurement time, including movements, and then uh, figures out how much time it has left. So if you can imagine our antenna as the Earth, the spherical scan starts at the North Pole and goes around the azimuth until it reaches what you would consider the South Pole. So right now it's saying we have about uh, 21 minutes. This is a pretty good sized scan um, and it's going to be a lot of data points. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the uh, video here and when it finishes, um, we'll go ahead and check that out. So as you can see, the measurement has now completed, measurement complete. It took just about the amount of time that was uh, listed on the screen. And we can go ahead and just go right to uh, data processing now. And uh, what we'll see here is you can see now that, that just that scan with 201 frequencies was 278,000 data points. That is what we've collected on this measurement. And so now, what we can do is we can select any elevation angle and then of course view the polar plot at that angle or vice versa. And we'll take a quick look at the spherical and let's go ahead and run it up to 2.4 gigs. 2.47 and we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and plot this. Sometimes it takes a second to uh, initially start MATLAB which is uh, included with the software the MATLAB runtime, I should say. Usually only takes a uh, minute to start, and there we go. And they'll be fast from now on. So this is the 3D plot of the antenna that we just measured. And we can go take a look at the efficiency, and this will kind of tell us if we have some gain errors or not. Uh, exit out, and let's go look at the efficiency and see what we got here. And um, actually, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's behaving very nice for the demo. 
Uh, you can see here we're uh, eh, it's showing around 90% efficiency. Um, there's not a lot of patch, or not a lot of uh, loss in that patch. It's an air patch. So to get the true efficiency, we would actually measure both polarization planes and then power add them together. But for this demonstration, uh, this will suffice. So I hope that the uh, basic demonstration of the positioner uh, was good for you. I'm going to go ahead and reset it so you can see it move back one more time. So here it goes. Now some heavier antennas may require a little slower speed. It all depends if you don't want them shaking around. And here's our patch returning back to zero. And, um, we hope you liked the uh, presentation. If you guys have any questions, uh, please let us know. Thank you.